Hello, thanks for stopping by the channel. This is Gigawing for the Sega Dreamcast, published by Capcom in 2000. This was a port of an arcade version, and when you play it, I think that's the first thing you're going to feel. It just feels like something you'd be plunking quarters into a cabinet to play. We have two game modes, arcade and a score attack. Score attack is really just a one-player version, and you're just going for a high score. Nothing too dramatic there. There is a basic attempt at a story, there's some magic medallion that you're looking for, but like I find for most shooters, the story is not something you're going to be invested in. It's the most basic outline just to get you into a ship and fighting. It's also not going to use all the buttons on the Dreamcast controller, and that may feel a little weird, but being a port, they really only had to equate to whatever they had in the arcade. We have a vertically scrolling shooter, where you choose one of four pilots to play. Each have their own unique, steampunk-inspired ship. Each ship has a different basic color and design, and they have a different looking offensive fire, and their bomb patterns are different too, which is nice, even if it's overwhelming at times. According to the manual, there are five stages in this game, but according to online, this game has seven. Searching for stuff online. They say that the arcade has at least six plus an extra one if you can get to the end with no continues. I beat this one on the Dreamcast. It, I counted five stages. I also seem to have gotten to the last boss. I'm guessing people are either counting some of the bosses as separate stages, or there's something I'm just totally missing when I'm looking through these videos or playing the game. I'm just guessing though. I mean, I've been looking at both the arcade and Dreamcast walkthroughs. I've been looking at videos online. I continue to count five stages. If you're familiar with this game and you can see where my counting is failing, please let me know in the video comments. It's actually been bugging me, and I'd like to figure out what the problem is. So this game, like all shmups, gets to shoot everything that moves and dodge as much incoming enemy fire as possible. And the thing with this game, I think, and a lot of games like it, is that you're being faced with an ungodly amount of bullets to dodge, and sometimes it becomes a major focus of the screen. For this one, at times, it is actually almost the only thing on the screen, and this can be visually jarring. I'm not sure if this is a result of the way this game was designed, I don't know if it's the Dreamcast color palette or the way it was animated, but there are times in this game when my eyes are overloaded. There's just so much going on, it becomes difficult to follow where my ship is. It is a bullet hell shooter, maybe that's always to be expected. And the truth is, you are going to die a lot in this game and you're going to have to shoot a lot in this game as well. The level of firepower from you, the bosses, and even some of the more basic enemies, it's really intense at times. But luckily you do have unlimited continues, which is great. The Dreamcast manual also says this game uses only two buttons. A is the fire button, and B is your bomb. You also have a reflex shield that you use when it charges. This is what you use when you press and hold the A button. The thing is, you're going to be wanting to hold down the A button for constant fire to start with. But when it naturally changes to the reflex shot when it's charged, it throws me off. And suddenly my firepower stops and it goes and becomes this reflex shield and then it quickly transforms back and it throws off my cadence. Turns out there is an auto shot button. If you go into the pause menu and you can see that the R button is actually the auto shot. Why they didn't mention this in the manual I don't know, but I didn't see it. When I play this one, I find myself mostly just trying to survive long enough until I can get a bomb. And then when I get a bomb, I press the B button as fast as I can. The bomb in this game is a massive, all-screen sort of an affair, and it does a pretty good job of clearing most things from the screen. It's not perfect though, which is why I find myself always using continues. The reflective shot shield thing is tougher for me to use because I'm always trying to take in all this visual information everything that's getting thrown my way, there's so much of it, and then suddenly switching to a reflective mode for just like one or two seconds so things bounce off you, that's kind of tough. I mean, suddenly a wave of bullets is coming at you and you trigger this, and now some of that wave is being reflected back, but only for like a second, and then maybe only half of that wave was actually reflected, so when your shields go down, now it's suddenly you're vulnerable again and I get destroyed, it's, it's difficult. I, I tend to not use the reflex shield that much because I'm not that skilled. With such an intense focus of all the lasers and bullets running across the screen, 
Sometimes it detracts from the other graphics for me. When you're playing this game, there's not a lot of time to pay attention to any of the enemy designs, any of the scenery. You're really just too busy trying to focus all your attention on dodging things and staying alive. With so much going on screen at once, it's both impressive and a total overload. I do like shooters like this, but maybe this one went a little too far for my sensibilities. It's okay, but it's just visually, visually crazy. What would I prefer for something like this to make it more enjoyable? I don't know. That's really hard to say. At first I thought maybe shrinking your ship a little would help, but I don't know if that would do it. Just guessing. I feel like if things maybe if they were smaller, maybe a tiny bit slower, I, I really don't know. But I say that knowing that there are a ton of people out there that absolutely love this game to death. I found strategy guides online, how you can clear the levels, and a bunch of people talking about how they can get far in this game on just like one quarter. So. There are some serious fans out there that apparently have some serious skill with this, and that's pretty impressive. I'm, I guess I'm more of a button masher kind of guy, and the continue function is what makes a game like this worth it for me. Maybe grab a friend, absorb the experience, shoot up a bunch of stuff. Anytime you play with the second person, it gets a lot more fun for me because that doubles your firepower, which is never a bad idea. I do like shmups just fine, but overall I think this one just feels okay to me. It's not particularly great. But it is fun to brute force your way through. Maybe they went a little too far with some of the visuals, at least from my sensibilities. But there are some people that love this one through and through, so what are you going to do? Well, that's all I have today for giggling for the Sega Dreamcast. Feel free to like and subscribe to the channel if this is your type of thing, and thank you for stopping by to take a look. Hope to catch you on another video.